Okay, today we're going to make a like an icon, um, like this right here. This is my initials, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. First, in Photoshop, we want to go to File, New. I uh, already have the width and height set to 500 by 500 pixels. That's good. Background content. Usually, I I leave this at transparent. You can go white or just whatever the background color is. If you do it transparent, then you have the option of of uh, having it transparent. If if not, then it, you know maybe a little more difficult. But I go transparent. You can always make the background whatever color you want. So here's our layer. First thing I'm going to do is is go in here and look for a nice looking color, maybe right about there. Control backspace. As long as your background color is what you want, and you have the layer selected, it will make it'll turn the whole background of that layer, or turn that whole layer rather, into the background color that you have selected over here. You got your foreground, and then you got your background color. So Control backspace fills the layer you have selected with that color. Um, next thing I'm going to do is create a new layer. I'm going to give the uh, the round, the elliptical marquee tool. If it doesn't show like that, just hold it down and it gives you the, the rest of the options. By default, I believe it's going to be on a rectangular, so hold it down then go down to elliptical. I'm just going to grab right up here in this corner. I'm going to hold shift. That way it makes a, a perfect circle. And let go. Right now we have the inside of the circle selected, so I want to reverse that so the outside is selected. I'll show you why in just a second, but go to select and then inverse. Now you notice the little the white dotted lines. Um, I'm going to come over here and grab the paint bucket tool. I'm going to click back on our default colors. I'm just going to click up here in the corner. Um, Okay, now now we have that. What we want to do is that's that's way too sharp. If you notice, and I, that's gonna distort it real bad. But if you notice, it's kind of uh, faded, just almost foggy. Just missed it in there. So with that layer selected, I'm gonna go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and that's almost perfect right there. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, say about 80. That looks pretty good there. Um, and the thing about having your different layers set up is if you want to come in here and create a new layer, bring it down to the bottom. Let's say you, you choose uh, like a, a blue, like that. Since it's my background layer and I have that layer selected, I'm going to hit Control Backspace. Now, if I turn this layer off, see instantly I've got a blue background, and it's that easy to change. If you have your your vignette on that layer, it's going to be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to just go in there and easily change that color. So, I like breaking up everything into layers because you can turn them off. You can turn them on. You can do whatever. Uh, I don't need that. So, okay. <clears throat> Create a new layer. This is going to be our text layer. So I'm going to grab the text tool. I'm going to draw a large box. And, you know, this can be a, like a favicon on a website. This can be uh, an avatar. Uh, it can be a number of little things that you like. Let's say you put it down in the little corner if you do a little tutorial or make a video uh, you can kinda have your own brand or your own little logo um, go to your uh, characters I'm gonna go to Harrington because that's what I used on the other one and lowercase let's see it's in black so I need to make it white okay I'm gonna un unclick the bold. Okay, 
and just crank it up. Let's give that a shot. And by the way, I, what I do is I, I come up here and I grab my move tool. Uh, you can also hit the letter V and that grabs it for you, but that's it right there. And then with the layer selected, you can move stuff around. I can move my my vignette around if I have that layer selected as well as the color but anyways you can try putting that maybe that vignette on top that looks pretty neat uh, we, let's let's try a little something else we have a little bit more time with the text tool or with the text layer selected I'm going to go to the effects and I th let's hit blending options. Let me see here. I think it's bevel and emboss. That's what it is. We're going to make this look like it's it's sunken down into the surface of the of the uh, page here. Um, size just kind of play with them see what you see what you like uh, change the depth you know just move them around see what you want you can change the angle of the the way the light is casting I, I, I kind of prefer the light coming from the top as opposed to the the bottom you may need to move it around so you don't have weird weird spaces that looks a little better coming from that angle a little too soft something like that Anyways, there you go. Uh, you can come up here to File, Save As. You can save it a, as a JPEG. Now, the only thing about JPEG, if, if you have any transparent uh, areas on your on your your icon or your your um, brand or whatever you want to call it, uh, you're going to want to save it as a PNG because a PNG is going to maintain that that transparent portion as transparent where JPEG if I'm not mistaken it's just gonna default at white so it'll just give it a white background for instance if we we unclick the the um, color layer here and we hit save as JPEG and I'm just gonna just save it to my desktop here I hit save well, let me name it something test if I save it as that, you notice what it did. It, it replaced all that transparent area with white, and and that didn't really didn't want that. So we'll go to File, Save as PNG, Save. Kind of hard to tell on there, but if you look on on the on your desktop here, you can see how you can still see uh, behind the uh, the vignette and through it because there's no color. Where this just made it a, a white background. So, depending on what you're wanting the the outcome to be like is depending on what what you select there, JPEG or PNG. But turn your layer back on. You can save it as whatever you want. Come over here to your little effects. You can toggle these on and off. You may not like that. Then just, I would say, just leave it like that then, or, or whatever. So uh, that's it. Hope you learned something, and uh, see you next time.